South Africa's space industry has taken one small but significant step, breaking ground in the first in Africa deep space ground station. The project will help track NASA's Artemis program to the moon and send the first astronauts to Mars. It's in the village of Matthias Fountain, about three hours from Cape Town. DW's Adrian Kreish went to see where they'll soon be tracking the satellites. It sometimes feels like the clocks stopped ticking here a long time ago. Machis Fontaine was built around a railway station and it still is the rare arrival of a train that brings a bit of life to the sleepy village. The 400 residents mainly make a living off travelers who stop here on their journey from Cape Town to Johannesburg. But this could change because scientists say that this is one of the best places on earth to communicate with the heavens. Clear skies and practically no rainfall. The conditions just outside the village in the Karoo Desert are ideal. It's, it's time for Africa to, to be counted when we're talking about the global, the global space market. Today we're breaking ground uh, for building a ground station that will allow us to be able to track and talk to satellites that go to the moon and outer space to other planets. <laughs> The project is a partnership between South Africa's National Space Agency and the U.S. Space Agency, NASA. We have been working with them for so many years to, ident to identify the proper, the best location in all of South Africa, if not in all of Africa, to, uh, to be part of a, a subnet of ground station supporting the Artemis program. Artemis is NASA's program to return astronauts to the moon by 2024, preparing the way for human missions to Mars. Ground stations like the new one in South Africa will play a key role in communication during the space flights. You, you are the generation that's going to defy the existing laws of physics and probably bring us new laws of physics. Missions that will also require talent, the NASA team tells students during a visit to a school in Cape Town. That's igniting hopes for the first person of color walking on the moon on a future mission. What they spoke about, the space exploration, it's actually intriguing for me. I love the stars and the universe. I was thinking of more going into um, the engineering field, but more the um, engineering with NASA and working on rockets and f rockets and stuff in the future. Can I like looking towards the future, pl wondering what it might look like, um, going to different, ga going out of the out of our solar system, exploring space, and um, just all of it is exciting. It just makes you, it just makes you feel like you can do something to improve the world. This is the generation that's going to take us to Mars. I firmly believe uh, that. Uh, this new generation, I call it the internet generation, they, they possess, possess so much uh, capabilities, knowledge is within the tips of their fingers. But information alone is not enough, they really need to be guided by people who've been there and this is the kind of thing that we do. We are trying to prepare the, the next generation to move in to replace us when it's time for us to retire. Back in Machis Fontaine, they can't wait for a NASA sign at the village entrance, bringing in more tourists. Some see it as the hand of heaven. That is a blessing from praying. Because we really need, then people can go up there and they can sleep here. I thank God this is a, like a fountain that they found in the desert. And I know this business. So if we've got people, we will survive. An optimistic outlook for the future, but residents will have to be patient. Only in three years' time will the station be speaking to travelers in space. And joining me now, you saw her in that report, is Andiswa Melissa from the South African National Space Agency. Welcome to DW News Africa. Now, this is a groundbreaking regional space center in Africa. Can you tell us in basic terms what exactly it'll do and how it's going to work? Thank you very much, Fahina, for having me. So with this ground uh, station, what we're looking to do is to support uh, the missions uh, for NASA going to for lunar exploration. Uh, on our side, we are one of three sites that have been strategically positioned globally uh, to support lunar missions. So this is this is ensuring that missions to the to Mars and to Mars. Uh, 
to the moon, uh, we are able to communicate uh, with the missions that are being sent out by various space agencies, including NASA. Now, NASA says the first person to step on the moon when the Artemis mission returns in 2025 will be a woman of color. How important is that development? Well, that's one of the most critical things. Firstly, um, that it will be a woman. That's the first one. I mean, we're talking at a, at a stage where even the suits that uh, astronauts wear are still designed for men and women have just had to find a way of making them fit uh, to actually be designing a mission that actually sends a woman uh, to be the first one in, in space is incredi incredible in this regard. To be a woman of color, of course, uh, we have a population around the world uh, where we normally do not find women of color in certain positions. And for young girls that are growing up in developing countries and rural communities, to see that that is an aspiration that they can look up into, it just makes it that much more incredible. Especially so for our involvement in South Africa, we're quite proud that actually involved in a mission and supporting a mission of this nature specifically for that reason, because we hear it a lot when we are engaging uh, with young learners uh, in rural schools, that they do not actually get to believe that they could actually be astronauts, that they could actually uh, be in space even. So to have representation and to have aspirations like this from NASA, it's something that we welcome very much. Now, you became the interim CEO of the South African National Space Agency this year. So congratulations on your appointment. And like you mentioned, there aren't that many women in leadership roles in the industry when it comes to representation. What advice do you have for women or girls who dream of, of a career in a space exploration? You can do it. It's absolutely possible. Uh, we've managed to achieve it. I'm here. I grew up in a rural village, village in Tala. It's still rural even today. Um, and yet uh, here I am as an acting CEO of a national space agency. So it's quite possible. And all the obstacles that as women we face uh, when we grow up in our when we grow, when we proceed in our careers, they they're all surmountable. And and every day we're making strides to make the work environment that much more acceptable for for women and that much more inclusive for for women. So courage. And it's been done. Now, there have already been several African-Americans on NASA missions. When do you think the first African will journey into space? Well, that is one of the things that for me is currently starting to bubble up as an ambition to actually make sure with our involvement uh, with the lunar exploration our ground station, we can also be building a program that's looking at sending the first African female uh, into space. That's definitely a program that we are actually now starting to build alongside uh, alongside uh, the legs uh, the legs program, uh, because uh, we need uh, a couple of years to actually make sure that uh, we train uh, the astronauts and with the participation of the private sector as well as governments into space. Space is becoming that much more accessible. And it also means that even for countries like ourselves, we can actually have the aspirations of sending someone in the moon. And definitely it would be wonderful for South Africa to build into this program a, the first uh, female African to actually go to the moon. Now, more broadly speaking, what does this project tell us about where South Africa is heading in terms of investing in a research for space exploration, science and also technology? And what does this mean for the continent? Firstly, within the continent, um, there's now a number of initiatives that we, we have a number of countries that are now venturing into the in, into space. Uh, recently, uh, this week, actually, Zimbabwe and uh, and Uganda launched their their own satellite. A big congratulations uh, to them. The focus, though, so far has been majorly on Earth observations, a satellite or telecommunication satellite, as we recently saw with uh, with Angola uh, are launching in October as as well. But when it comes to space exploration beyond um, uh, Earth observations and communications, especially going to other planets, Africa has been uh, falling behind in a way or left behind 
in that kind of a, in that kind of a race. With this crown station, we are actually putting it as well on the map that Africa now is also starting to participate in lunar missions, and it does open up for science uh, and and R and D uh, because we now will be in a position where we're receiving the data on from the missions that are are looking at lunar. And therefore, the, in the finding that information and building research programs around that becomes a reality for, for South Africa as well, as well as the continent. It, it definitely puts a stride, uh, quite a stride for in terms of the progression that the continent is making in participating in, participating in space. And the big question now becomes uh, is beyond the ground station, what more should we be actually be looking at, like the astronaut, uh, like the astronaut program? that we can actually also send our own astronauts uh, to Luna and, and Mars. And, and finally, do you forecast any key challenges that would be tailored to this project in South Africa? Well, one of the, one of the major challenges, uh, but in a way it's also an opportunity, is you would find that the, the, where the station is, 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 is put is a rural, it's um, there is no infrastructure in place at this at, at this stage in 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 there. Um, so the build up of ensuring that the appropriate infrastructure and readiness for the site uh, to host um, the ground the ground station is one of the critical elements that we're going to be focusing on in the next three years. The energy uh, are challenges that the country is faced with impacts us a lot when it comes uh, when it comes when it comes to, to space uh, because we, it is an energy intensive uh, business and the requirement in terms of our uptime and the amount of time we cannot afford uh, a, a, a much we don't have much flexibility if you will and around downtime within our system so the energy crisis in the country is definitely one of our major challenges and concern at the moment we do have um, uh, strategies in place of course to make sure as we currently do with our operations at the moment to make sure we can mitigate against that but it does make it an expensive uh, an expensive project to to pull off without the traditional energy. However, um, the, the 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 aspect that we're looking forward to is to turning even the challenge of being community like we're putting this ground station where it's in the middle of the Karoo, um, the education. Uh, uh, levels in terms of the schools that are available are still low level schools it's far for to get to universities and and so forth and it is an impoverished uh commun community where we're putting this we're turning that however into an opportunity because by bringing an infrastructure like this one is access to to energy because we'll be putting that for for the program but also energy to connectivity so the, con the connection to the fiber we're looking to attend the program to actually make sure contribute to education um, and for for us we're starting to talk in five to ten years after we've launched the ground station the key engineers that were waiting and running the station should be kids that people that are kids today um, but we should be foreseeing them that in 10 years time they'll actually be the ones who are the engineers running the station so homegrown uh, capability um, from the community itself, because that can only grow the community and take and take away what we're now seeing as challenges, but actually become an opportunity for the community. All right, that is Andiso Melissa speaking to us uh, from South Africa. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you so much, Fiona.